Marvel She-Hulk Attorney at Law released August 18th, 2022, roughly eight weeks ago. And like a good little Marvel fanboy, I was watching every single week, Thursday night, after the kids went to sleep. Until recently, I was actually very excited for the franchise. The first episode went very well. Every origin story tends to go really well, whether it's a villain or a superhero. Look at Iron Man, he kicked the entire thing off, and we love that movie. Also look at Joker, different universe, but as an origin story, that was really, really good. So the first episode, we see Jennifer Walter and her cousin, the Hulk, Bruce Banner, in a car, they're going somewhere, I don't remember, and then they get attacked by aliens that we never see again. I don't know what happened to them, but apparently Bruce's blood helped change Jennifer Walters into She-Hulk. And for the rest of the episode, we see her figure out herself as She-Hulk. And apparently she can bounce between becoming a Hulk and just going back to a regular human which is pretty freaking cool, definitely one thing that the Hulk is very jealous of. Here's the thing though, after the first episode, I was super excited. Second episode, okay, you know, we're getting the story going, here we go, you know, it's going really good. Third episode, alright, Emil Blonsky, that's a little different, came out of left field, but let's explore it anyway. That was pretty cool. Until about episode four, when it said, is this not real magic? We ended up with a fake magician who ended up using the same tools as Doctor Strange and Wong. Cool, we ended up figuring the entire thing out in the end. They of course went to court because that's the entire point of She-Hulk herself. And uh, we ended up getting a hookup, you know? Good for her. She's getting out there and she's using her new persona to do better than her real persona. The next couple of episodes changed a bit because we ended up with Titania as the main villain, technically. And uh, the reason that she's relevant is she busted through the wall at the end of the first episode and uh, somehow didn't end up in jail. Like, uh, I'm sorry, but it doesn't matter if you're a superhero or supervillain, it doesn't matter. You bust through property and you don't go to jail for it? Yeah, she got stopped by She-Hulk, that was one of the coolest things ever, but she didn't go to jail for it. So she ends up trademarking the name She-Hulk which I don't understand why anybody bought that product because if it doesn't have She-Hulk's likeness or endorsement or anything on the packaging, how does it actually sell? Doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever, let's keep rolling. So she beats Titania in court and a couple days, a week later, I don't know, but they end up at the same wedding. We see a fight between them, Titania ends up getting punched in the face and that's the last we see of her right now. And it's at this point I'm starting to not understand the real plot of the story. Because the only thing that we have seen during this entire show was She-Hulk getting robbed one time. And during a robbery, you know, it wasn't that big a deal. I was like, okay, cool, we're gonna see her actual use of force. This is kind of an action show, Marvel knows action, like, let's see it beat up. And then we saw the stabbing of the needle and the damaging of the needle. Okay, that was a little different because no real mugger would actually use a needle during a robbery to, I don't know, rob somebody? So. The next episode, we end up at this tree. Episode seven was absolutely boring. This is when I realized that the entire show was designed to be slice of life for She-Hulk, but it, that doesn't make any sense because if you look at some of the great shows out there, some of the ones that ran for a really long time, like Supernatural, for example, they had, what, 15 years, 15 seasons, something like that? They had slice of life in the middle of each season. Okay, so at the beginning you would start off with like this world ending thing, you would go through and just constantly keep going, you'd end up kicking ass during the show, slice of life, building characters, and then at the end of the season you'd end up back with the big boss, and you know, figuring that out in the last three episodes, and then fighting him, and then giving us a cliffhanger for the next season. Awesome, that's how it should be done. But every single episode of She-Hulk has been slice of life. So really the only diabolical storyline I've ever seen about this show at all was the needle. When she got attacked in the alleyway, they ended up stabbing her with a needle. So it means this is actually in the writing. It was meant to happen. We didn't see anything about it, you know. Oh, next episode we focus on the needle and how they're trying to bring She-Hulk down. That didn't make any sense because at the next episode we didn't see anything about it. But at the end, we ended up seeing the needle again. Well, we ended up seeing the two with a really badass needle, which I can only think is vibranium because that's like the last thing. Oh, we're talking about a Hulk here. It can take entire shot from a tank. Let's try and, you know, use something that's indestructible. Vibranium. Let's try it. Let's make a needle out of it. That's the only thing we got. And then we jump into the next episode. We start off with Slice of Life. Nothing more. So episode 8 comes out. I actually saw a spoiler of daredevil in it so i'm like oh well that doesn't get spoiled for me because i already see it it's on tiktok and besides the frog dude being the absolute worst villain i have ever seen it's completely sorry that anybody even signed up to you know 
be that character. At the end of the episode, there was finally Intelligentsia came out and tried to destroy She-Hulk, or at least her image. Because while She-Hulk was accepting an award for top female attorneys, they ended up, they took over the broadcast and they started showing, you know, all these bad things about She-Hulk and why she need to be taken down. And then we see the night that Jen Walters and that dude that I can't remember his name of because he's so irrelevant, when the night that they hooked up, he ended up recording it. She gets mad, she breaks the screen, uh, and then she turns around and she sees these guys with masks on recording her breaking the screen. Okay, so obviously that's Intelligentsia trying to tear down the image of She-Hulk, and that's fine. So obviously she goes into rage, she breaks through the wall, she picks up one of the dudes, and she immediately ends up with a face full of guns, which look like blasters, so I can only think that they were trying to stun her. That, besides the point, where did these guys come from? Were they just ready in case, you know, something bad happened that, you know, she might freak out? Who are they working for? Are they actually working for the police? Or are they working for Intelligentsia? That obviously makes no sense. Like, I would honestly like some of this to be explained a little bit more. That, you know, it's not really making a whole lot of sense right now. But here's the thing. We're going into episode 9. Episode 9. The final episode of the first season, or series, I don't know yet, and we have no idea what the actual plot is. All we know is somebody's trying to get her blood with a needle made from vibranium, and Intelligentsia is trying to dare down her image. That's all we got. So I can only expect Episode 9 to be filled with two things. Intelligentsia, and how mad she ended up with at the award ceremony, and the needle. What they're trying to use her blood for. That's all I got. If they try and pull anything else out, or any other slice of life, fourth wall breaks, or whatever out of this show, I honestly feel like it's not gonna keep going. Now we all know that shows get canceled because nobody watches them. Why is that? Well, because if nobody's watching it, advertising goes down, you can't actually make any money on it, or in Disney cases, subscriptions, it's not actually going that way. I don't know how Disney does it, that's not my problem. But right now, recording this video on Google, there's Three different categories I'm looking at. IMDB has a rated 5 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes doesn't actually like anything good. They've got it at 87%. But Google Reviews has it 2.1 star. That's 12,927 people. That's pretty freaking bad. So what they really need to do is they need to knock it out of the park on episode 9. They need to bring in some kind of story and actually make it a plot that can keep going for multiple seasons. Or they give us a cliffhanger that is so insane we have to have a season 2. Like maybe the aliens from episode 1. I don't know, but Disney has a lot of work to do, and we'll see this upcoming Thursday. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see me talk about episode 9 and a full recap of everything that happened in She-Hulk and whether or not we're going to get a season 2. Y'all have a great day.